If you're currently stuck in the 4, 5, 600 range and you're kind of getting sick of staying there and you want to hit 700 plus by your next SAT, then this video is for you. Today, we're going to go over two problems that students are facing when they are stuck in the 4, 5, 600 range. These two problems are just so massive that if you can solve them and get them out of your way, you're essentially at 700 plus. Well, not really. You're like 99% there. It worked for me back in high school and it works for all the students that I've been working with for the past 11 years. So hopefully it works for you as well. And if it's your first time here, my name's John. I've been an SAT math tutor for the past 11 years. And my specialty is taking a student who's currently in 4, 5, 600 range to 700 plus by their next SAT through online program. SAT Math Accelerator, but that's not the main point of this video. Let's talk about you. So from what I'm seeing, if students are stuck in the four, five, six turn range, they're facing these two issues. First one is that they don't know how to solve these questions. Well, not all of them, because you probably know how to solve some of these questions, but for the majority of them, you're probably either guessing or hoping that you're doing something right and get to the right answer. And the second problem is time. You see, you feel like, okay, if I have unlimited time, I can probably get most of these questions right. But the problem is, SAT has time limit. You not only have to answer these questions correctly, but also answer them quickly. And instead of talking about a bunch of theories and what could possibly be the issue, let me just show you exactly what's going on. So if we take a look at this question over here, you probably have seen something similar to this on the recent SAT. Students probably look at this question and think, okay, I've seen a radical before, cube root. Okay, I'm kind of familiar with it. And then they look at the answer choices and they go like, what the hell is this? So for the next few minutes, they tried this, they tried that, they tried this, they tried that, and hope something would work out but you just wasted five minutes and you just don't know how to answer this question and you move on and that cycle repeats for medium to hard difficulty questions. So what exactly is the problem? See, in order for you to solve this question, you only need two things. One is the understanding of radical operations and then fractional exponents. You literally don't need anything else. And when you have the right concepts in place, you know exactly what to do and you get to the answer super quickly. So the reason students can't solve SAT questions or not being capable of solving every question that they see on the SAT is that they don't have the right concepts in place. It's like trying to do subtractions when you only have learned how to add. And think about the SAT is that it's a very, very specific exams. And there are only 25 topics that are tested. If you know these 25 things, then you are going to know how to solve every single question on the exam. And when you're studying for the SAT, you want to study them in a very specific order because when it comes to these advanced topics, they are building on top of the basic skills you have learned from the past. One of the biggest problems that I faced and my other students were facing was that they were studying these topics in the wrong order and that just made SAT like 10 times harder. So I'm going to link this worksheet in the pinned comment down below, which you can print out. And once you download, it's going to have concept summaries for essentially more than half of these topics. And these videos are essentially going to summarize everything and the only things you need to know about certain topics for the SAT. Remember, you don't need to know everything. You just got to know the right things. And on top of learning all the concepts, you need one more thing to solve every question correctly on the SAT. And that is going to be the formulas. And if you want the full list of every single formula you need to know for the SAT, then check out the pinned comment for a full PDF. So for example, there are these two formulas known as sum and the product of the root for a quadratic function. Why do we need that? Well, when you see a question like this, most people see the quadratic function right here and say, oh, we're looking for roots. So I'm just going to factor them and then find out what the roots are. And I'm just going to add, multiply them together and find out what the answer is. And the problem here is that the SAT knows your exact thinking process. So what they did was when they designed this question, they specifically made it so that the question is not factorable. No matter how hard you try to factor this, it's not going to be factorable. And you can probably use the quadratic formula, but that's going to take way too long. So instead, you got to know the right formulas. If you're looking for the product of the roots, simply just use the product of the roots formula and get to the answer much quicker. So essentially, you have to have the right concepts in place so that you are capable of solving these questions. But you also have to have the right formulas and rules in in place so that you can answer these questions where you either you know it or you don't. If you know the formula, you can get the answer. If not, you're screwed. And once you get those two things in place, you are good to go. You are now capable of solving every question on the SAT. But that's the problem. To get a high score, you not only have to solve these questions correctly, but also solve them quickly because we have a nasty time limit on the exam. And if you want to get faster, you just need to think about where am I wasting most of the time on? Well, from my experience, one major part was going to be mental math. See, people are thinking about four times seven, six times eight, these small calculations, you have to do them throughout the math section. And if the SAT is asking you, hey, what is seven times six? And you go, um, oh, 42. Guess what? You just got rejected from your target school. It should not take you that long. If you want to get a high juicy score, you, you got to be like, 
this on the multiplication table. 4 times 6, 24. 7 times 8, 56. 9 times 9, 81. It sounds ridiculous, but it was a major game changer for me back in high school and my past 600 plus students. So I'm going to link you to a Quizlet of mental math training. Go through the flashcards and make sure you get your mental math on check. And now you got the concepts, you got the formulas, you got the mental math ready. What else could you ask for? Can't you just give me 700 plus already? The thing is, there is one more thing you're missing. And this is crucial for you to hit 700 plus on the math section. You see, the thing about the SAT is that people, <laughs> like humans, write all of these questions, right? And it's a pain in the ass to come up with new question for every single one of these SATs. So from my experience, what ends up happening is that all these questions essentially get recycled because that's much easier and quicker than coming up with a question that no one has ever seen before and that's going to trip up all the students. So long story short, SAT is filled with these question patterns and as long as you know exactly what to look for, you're gonna be able to answer these questions very, very quickly. Let me show you. So for example, if you see a function with a table and the question is talking about factor, then this question is testing you on remainder theorem. Our answer is going to be choice C. If the question is giving you a line and a parabola and it's asking for the number of intersections, you just need to use what's known as discriminant and find the answer like. So you don't even have to think about anything. You see the question, you go into discriminants. And also when you see a triangle within another triangle, chances are there's like a 99.9% .9 chance that it's testing you you on similar triangles and you just need to set up the proportions and get the correct answer. And these are just tip of the icebergs and there are just so many patterns that you just need to be familiar with. That way, when you see a question like this, while most people are trying to figure out, okay, do I do this? Do I do that? Do I do this? If you know the question patterns, if you see this question and immediately recognize that, oh, it's testing me on similar triangles and you set up a proportion. If you can do that for every single question that shows up on SAT, think about how long it's going to take you to solve both modules. Based on the data of my past students, after they go through the concepts, formulas, question patterns, and the mental speed training, they essentially have at least 10 minutes left on average for each section slash each module. So if you follow everything I mentioned in this video and study for the SAT the right way, then time is never going to be an issue and you're going to hit 700 plus without much trouble. So if you're stuck in the low score right now, do not get discouraged, follow the plan, put in the work, and you will eventually hit 700 plus. Make sure you get the 25 concept list and then start with the study plan, which I'm going to link in the pinned comment down below.